Good morning, years five and six, and welcome to Friday's English lesson. I'm all alone today, Miss Marks is in class, so just me, I'm afraid. But the good news is the learning intention has changed. So today we are, can I edit my writing for improvement? Okay, so hopefully you've got the first draft of your leaflet and you are now ready to edit it. Okay, so I have four editing stations for you. I'd like you to spend at least 10 minutes on each one. Make sure that when you're editing, you just focus on that one particular aspect, okay? I've got an example of a, a section that I might have written about um, excursions and days out when you're on your Mars resort. So we're just gonna edit that one together. <clears throat> so the first editing station is um, spellings. So do any of your spellings look wrong? Have you used the wrong homophones? That's a key thing, isn't it? Lots of people get the wrong homophone. Have you spelt your superlative adjectives correctly? So have you remembered to change the Y to an I before adding the EST? Or actually, should it have most in front of it? Okay, so make sure, and the adjective itself is spelt, the root word of the adjective is spelt correctly. Um, one trick is to read backwards. So use can you help to backwards writing your reading try. Reading backwards sometimes enables you to spot those errors because you're not reading for meaning, you're just looking at the words individually. So always worth a try. Uh, you can use a dictionary to help you. And also you've got that persuasive word map that I gave you earlier in the week that you can also use um, to check your spelling. So here I've put down here some commonly misspelt words, um, particularly these homophones here that are often used wrongly, okay? And this accommodation, I think this is one of the year five, six spelling words, and it's a tricky word to spell. I always struggle to remember if it's double C and double M, okay? so. Do double check. So here we have, I'm just going to focus on this piece of writing here based on the spellings, okay? So we've got whether you're a thrill seeker or a sightseer, the Red Planet Resort has something for everyone. You can troll through the red fields and admire the craters which were created a million light years ago. However, if excitement is more your cup of tea, then there's our newly opened solar system theme park or the popular Martian Two Swords, guaranteed to keep all ages entertained. <laughs> Spelling's not too bad in this, I think. I've looked through as I was reading it, and I think I looked at that first one and I was like, oh, not sure about that. It's not an incorrect spelling of weather, if I was talking about the sun and the rain and the snow, but actually what it's not what I want, is it? I want the other homophone. I want this spelling here. Weather. So I corrected that whether you're or and that should be your as in you are whether you are a thrill seeker or a sightseer okay so actually that shouldn't be spelled like that should it that should be your whether you're a thrill seeker or a sightseer the red flags are something for everyone you can troll troll I missed a letter off there haven't i and i have to confess that wasn't intentional so i need to add on Stroll, don't I? Because that's another word. A nice word. We stroll, we walk, we you know, we enjoy a nice walk through somewhere if we stroll. So um, I think other than that, my spellings are okay. So I can move on to the next editing station. Okay, so my next editing station is looking at punctuation. So I'm checking for missing full stops, commas, and capital letters, okay? When do we need capital letters? We need them at the start of sentences and we need them for proper nouns as well. So names of places and people. So have you included any parentheses? Okay, or what about colons, semicolons or dashes? Have you tried to up-level your uh, punctuation in any way? Um, I'm not going to read all this now, but there's just some examples here of uh, the ways in which we can use commas in our writing because that's something that we are all guilty of missing out when we are checking our writing. So... Let's have a look at that same piece of text again, but this time, rather than focusing on the spellings, we're going to focus on the punctuation. So whether you're a thrill seeker or a sightseer, the Red Planet Resort has something for everyone. Okay. Now, I think this first sentence is a complex sentence. Okay. Because the reason I say that is because I could have had the Red Planet Resort has something for everyone. I could have had that sentence on its own, but I added a subordinate clause, whether you're a thrill seeker or a sightseer. 
Now that wouldn't make sense on its own as a sentence, would it? So that's my subordinate clause, which is adding a bit of extra information to my main clause. So what do I need to put in between those two clauses? That's right, I need to put a comma. So whether you're a thrill seeker or a sightseer, the Red Planet Resort has something for everyone. And you could probably hear when I read it that there was a slight pause um, when I read it. You can stroll through the red, red fields and admire the craters, which were created a million light years ago. Okay. Again, this is extra information and extra clause being added on here. There's a special type of clause. Does anybody know what this is called? Clauses that start with which, who, where, when, those sorts of words. They're called relative clauses, okay? Um, and we generally have a comma to separate those. Although interesting, we don't, if it starts, if your relative clause starts with that, you don't need to put a comma. Uh, however, yeah, I've got my comma after my conjunction, so that's right. If excitement is more your cup of tea, comma, then there is our newly opened solar system theme park or the popular Martian Two Swords. And I think nice use of a dash here, I'm pleased with that, because I put guaranteed to keep all ages entertained. Okay. And extra information, I think dashes tend to be a little bit more informal, but I think actually this is, you know, this is okay to use in my advert for the Red Planet Resort. So all in all, not too bad. I've just added, oh, I've just spotted one more thing actually. I've got a word here, a hyphenated word. So I've got two words really combined together to make um, a word. Can you spot it? It's here, look. I think I need to have a hyphen there to make it thrill seeker, to make it one word, okay? Let's move on to the next thing. So our next editing station is persuasive language. Okay, so how have I persuaded the reader to take a trip to uh, the Red Planet Resort? Have I written it in the second person? So am I saying you to really engage the reader, make them feel like they're important, if I'm talking directly to them, okay? And then here's some of the things that we talked about this week in, in ways that we could persuade the reader. So our superlative adjectives, okay? Making it sound like it's the best it could possibly be other interesting adjectives to make it sound like it's a really amazing place and those rhetorical questions. Okay, so let's have a look again at that same piece of text and see how I have done for my persuasiveness. Whether, ignore the spellings and punctuation errors now because I've just corrected those previously and obviously you'll do it on one document. Whether you're a thrill seeker or a sightseer, the Red Planet Resort has something for everyone. You can stroll through the red fields and admire the craters which were created a million light years ago. However, if excitement is more your cup of tea, then there is our newly opened solar system theme park, or the popular Martian Two Swords, guaranteed to keep all ages entertained. Now, I haven't included a rhetorical question here, but I don't know that you necessarily have to include a rhetorical question in every single section. Um, I think they're better in the introduction and the conclusion. So I'm not too worried about the fact that I haven't got one in here. But what I do think I could do is add some more uh, adjectives, whether they be interesting adjectives or superlative adjectives to make it sound a little bit more persuasive. So have a little think through. I'm gonna underline the um, bits that I think we could perhaps add some more detail to. Then I want you to pause the video and see what you think we could add and then we'll see if we kind of agree or whether, you know, your ideas are better than mine. Quite possibly they will be. The red fields could probably have something, couldn't they? I think the creators could have something in front of them. And maybe the solar system theme park could have something in front of it. So pause the video and have a little think about what you might want to add in front of those what adjectives or superlative adjectives you might want to add in to make it even more persuasive. Okay, welcome back. Let's see what you came up with or what I came up with and see whether you think it's any better than what you came up with. Probably not. Um, I'm not very creative then. So you can stroll through the, um, what could we say? The fascinating, the fascinating, Fascinating red fields and admire the. Now, if they're quite big, 
they're quite big, they might be quite impressive maybe. So I could say the impressive craters, which were created a million light years ago. However, if you it's more your cup of tea than there is our newly opened, uh, what word could we describe? Um, maybe because it's newly opened, maybe it could be like state of the art. The newly opened, most state of the art? No, just I think state of the art on its own. State of, and I think that might be hyphenated, state of the art. You're kind of having it as one word, so putting the hyphen makes it into one word. State of art, the oh, newly opened state of the art. Uh, I think probably a comma after open if you're doing that. Newly opened state of the art solar system theme park, or the popular. I'm just trying to think whether we could, there's anywhere that we could include a um, superlative adjective. Can't think of one at the moment, but you may have done. So put it on the blog if you have to let us know what you came up with. Um, it's not, doesn't matter if I haven't managed to get one in here. Hopefully I'll have managed to get one somewhere else in my leaflet. But hopefully you'll agree that that has improved it slightly and made it slightly more um, persuasive. Let's move on to our last editing stations then so our last one is our layout features okay so have we have we set our writing out to help guide the reader so we've got subheadings pictures columns and maybe we might have wanted to include some bullet points if there's some things we want to list to make our list clearer we might have bullet pointed it if we're doing that remember about the rules around punctuating bullet points um, if you've included a bullet pointed list let's have another look at this well I think a lot of those features, layout features, I'm not necessarily going to get from just looking at this one section. But one thing that perhaps is missing that I haven't got that might um, I might want to, when I'm editing, include is a subheading. OK, so I might want to put here, uh, I don't know, things to do, excursions or something. Ex oh, always do that, always forget. OK, so I might want to put up here excursions. And excursions is a nice sort of formal way, a posher way of saying trips out, days out, okay? So excursions, I've put myself a colon there because it's introducing what's to come and I'm going to underline it just to make it clearer. So by having those subheadings, if a reader picks it up and goes, oh, I just want to double check what there is to do while I get there, they can go directly to that section and have to read the whole thing to try and find what they're looking for in the text. That's why we have those layout features. Anyway, as I say, spend 10 minutes on each one. Really just focus on that one editing station at a time and try and improve your leaflets before you put, put together a final draft to send to your teachers. We really look forward to reading those and I hope you've enjoyed English this week. I'm so excited that we have one more week to go of home learning and then we're all back together again. Really looking forward to seeing you all back in school and I hope you have a happy and healthy weekend and I'll see you next week. Take care. Bye.